All right, all right. I am here. Can you guys hear me okay? I had to, uh, sorry for the two minute, two and a half minute pause there. I had to get sharing and it just uh, didn't work out. Oh, people are talking already. Hi. Hi, everyone. Is there any talking? Yeah, I'm just a bit behind, Susan. I'm just a bit behind. All right. Suzanne Shep is here. Howdy. Hi from Justin, Texas. <laughs> we hear you. Woo. Thank you, Lisa Hood. I, I was sharing because I want everyone in the group and then I put it on the page and it has the old picture. So I was trying to fix it, but meh, it didn't fix. So whatever. Hi, Sue from New Zealand. Ooh, awesome. Awesome. New Zealand. We love New Zealand for many reasons, but both my children love the All Blacks, which, and I watch them too. And we were able to purchase some, uh, captain's run shirts and stuff like that it's it's really cool so hi from switzerland hello 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 so what do you think about what i have on my screen guys this is really cool this is um applique lettering large applique lettering and there's a couple of ways we're gonna do it and we are gonna go through them. So are we ready to get started, everyone? Hopefully. I sound much better. Yeah, I've been tired lately. I've been so tired. Uh, Cindy King, hi. Hi from Texas. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Don's downstairs. He's going to say hello. Um, I'm expecting the Norseman and Karina to be on just for fun because they like to hang out. So cool. All right, let's go to up here. Now I am in Hatch Embroidery Software 2 and I just find it's more comfortable for me to do lives in. But you'll be able to take this information into any software, any embroidery software that you're using. You might just have different tools than what I'm gonna use. Um, but you should be able to do it. You might not be able to do automatic uh, applique, but you know how to do applique, running stitch, zigzag sit, stitch, satin stitch. So even if you don't have the shortcuts, you can take it to your software. So now that I've said that, can you guys see my mouse uh, pointer is huge? Can you guys see that? Because it's weird. So if I misclick on something, it's because it's the size of a tank or something. <laughs> well then. All right. So the first thing we want to talk about with this is um, choosing a font. Now it does not matter if you pick a font that is a TTF or a built-in font. Generally, are, am I going to stitch this out? Uh, tomorrow we will, or maybe for the next live. I'm kind of tired, so I didn't think I'd be able to do it all. Plus the camera set up and everything like that. I just, uh, I just thought I'd do the digitizing because it's fun and I can see you guys and talk to you. I can't really do the stitch out ones without Don and he is busy working. So yeah. So I will though. I think it'll be fun. So, okay. Fonts the thing to look for with fonts and you do not have to use the built-in ones generally and in general terms i recommend them because they are going to stitch out better but we're not actually um stitching a font we just want the shape of it so therefore use ttf fonts it doesn't really matter how you know, it looks, we are just going to outline it. So let's go to lettering and monogramming and let's go to lettering. And I'm just going to type a big S. I was doing O before, um, but it was kind of boring. So I'm just going to do the S. Now we're not going to worry. These are awful long satin stitches, but don't worry. We're not worrying about that right now. We're not going to stitch it out. So this is we want it big. This is a large applique. So five by four. All right. That's cool. Now, wow, this is kind of terrible. Again, don't worry about it. 
<laughs> Elvia says you make it so easy. Well, it kind of is if you follow the steps to it. Um, embroidery, digitizing, you know, it's it, it can be kind of hard. But once you get the hang of it, you're good to go. Okay, so, and this is a built-in font block too. How about we change that to something? Let's go right down here. We're gonna do a true type font so I can show you guys how this is going to work out. So something fancy, MFC, Billow, Claver. I always go to those ones. Magneto, how about that? Let's see what that looks like. Well, that's ugly for an ass. That's just darn ugly. Let's try again. I can uh, search through here, so this will make it easier. So how about decorative? So now it's just gonna show me all of the decorative fonts. It'll save you time if you wanna do it that way. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Antique Rose, that one is probably, it's beautiful, but it's probably too complicated. How about Arnold? Okay, that's a little bit weird perhaps, but I think it'll work for what we want. So Joy, hello from Paducah, Kentucky. First time I've been able to catch you live. All right, well, welcome to the live. And So Me says hi from Oregon, hi. Hi. Hi from Canada, I guess I could say. So what do you guys think of this S? Do you think it's um, good? It's kind of ugly. I'm not sure if I like it, but I also don't want to spend all eternity searching for a font because y'all know I could, right? Yes. Hi, Sue from England. Oh, hi, Tanisha from England. I used to live in England and I absolutely love England. So there we go. You guys aren't seeing my pop-ups. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. So you don't see me going through all these fonts. I'm like talking like you can, and I forgot that you can can't. So apologies for that. It is just the way it works and it's a bit annoying, but there we go. So let me just find something. I don't like this Arnold one. I think it's really strange looking. So, okay, I'll just be a second. I promise I will not take forever doing this. How about this called Harrington? All right. Well, this is a good example of um, what I'm talking about. This will work, but it is not the greatest choice for this. What program are you using? Hello from Florida. I am using Wilcom Hatch Embroidery Software 2, and I have the digitizer level. The That's the level that you need. It's the top level. That is the level that you need to digitize anything. So, okay, I picked one. Um, this is the Harlow font and it's just a true type font. Now it's pretty cool. I love the swirlies, but what you have to pay attention to is how thin it is. Look at how thin it is on certain parts. Now this is a big letter. It is five and a half by four and you're gonna have a heck of a time cutting that out because of the thin parts and you are gonna have a really hard time when you put satin stitches on it there's not going to be any of the fabric showing through so this is a great example of what not to do this is not a good one for that this one would be great if you switch the lead the, because it's so big if you switch the satin stitches to fill stitches or to tommy stitches so that one would be good for that. I'm going to leave that up because it is really a good example. Cindy King, take your time. I'm sewing 3D puff caps and walked away for just a second. and forgot to put my phone down. And so it's not going to be too puffy. Sorry about that. I, I, I might take the blame for it. All right. I'm just fine. I know you guys can't see my pop-ups. Um, let's we want something thick so that was the point of me saying all that is that you want a thick font um that is not a th thick font Ooh, let's control that control z all right i am just going to use something like this no why did i click that again why why 
I need more caffeine, but it's the end of the day, so I can't do the caffeine thing. There we go. That one's nice and fat. See the difference? That's awesome. So let's delete this guy. So we'll just select them and delete. And now we have our fat lettering. Now, this one's fantastic because look at all the space. Now, remember, we're not paying any attention to the nasty long satin stitches that we got going on here because we are not stitching this part out, right? So Sadie's sewing and embroidery says, hi, Sue. Hello, Sadie. Which font is this? It is right here. It's called Alpha Slab 1. Can you see my pointer right here? You guys can't see my pop-ups, but you can see the results of the pop-ups. It's just kind of annoying, but sorry okay so now we're not stitching this out we're not worrying about any of it I like the size we can you know maybe make it a little bit see I like that just a little bit better I just kind of stretched it out a little bit Grace Miller says hi from Southern California mm, I'd love to be there that's awesome so we're gonna select it and we are gonna go all the way down to create layouts. That's one of my favorite places to be. And we're gonna go right here to create outlines and offsets. And if you don't have Hatch um, embroidery software, then your software should have an outline feature. I know Ember does, P Design, probably does i'd have to think about it i i have a hard time sometimes switching in between um and worst case scenario if you can't find it then you can just use this as a template and just digitize it it would take like five minutes to do um so either way you can do it so let's go to create outlines and offsets so does everyone know the difference between an outline and an offset do we know Outline is right at it, right on the line. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right on the line. And an offset is offset from the object. So you can put one line here on the offsets, but it's going to offset and make different shapes. And then you have, you know, a whole bunch of different options for that. But we just want an outline and we don't even have to really worry about this because our S is just fine. So single run and I'm going to do it in black because I can't stand this green. So now you can see here that we have it done, right? We have it done. When do you use offsets? Good question. Offsets are actually so much fun. Let's do one and I'm going to show you. If you want to do the hatch smash, that's when you'd use an offset when you want something, you know, decorative and pretty or you just want to put it together. Let's do a back stitch and we're going to do this one and we're going to do rounded corners and include holes. So there we go. And it's going to do both. So that one went on the inside, but you see how cool that looks. And you know what? You could add that right into your design. Um, so that is a fantastic place to use offsets. Also, if you wanted to do letters of a different size, look what happens. They're all separate. So you can just simply pull them out. Or if you don't like four, you can just do two. Now, the other thing you can do with that, which is so easy, is you can change that to a motif stitch. Not that one, but you can change it to a motif stitch and you can make, uh, you know, like a new design or, or fancy editing on it. Let's do even there. There you go. The first one, which is a circle. Um, isn't that pretty just like that? And what about, uh, I deleted them, but if you do a line, uh, left number three in there, wouldn't that look fantastic? Yeah, I'm thinking so. So outline is just on the outline offset. I, I must have clicked that for it to go in, but normally it goes out. And you know, if you're making a key fob, that's when you use an offset, but it is um, motif stitches. You can overuse them, but for something like this, 
how fantastic is that so we might add that in at the end so i'm gonna delete those offsets am i stuck i might be stuck there we go i was stuck i don't know why lots of stitches i'm gonna delete everything but the outline so now we have an outline and actually we have two i'm not sure why we have two but thank you hatch there we go so now we have an outline with hatch we've got a really groovy shortcut if you don't have hatch if you're using other embroidery software you can still do this because all you have to do is copy and paste and change the stitch type so we know that when we're doing embroidery it's a running stitch it's a zigzag stitch to hold everything down and it's a satin stitch to finish it off so copy put it down change it same thing so with hatch though there's this groovy shortcut that i think is awesome so convert to applique yeah and oh what happened okay it's done so is that difficult no not at all it is not at all so that is awesome absolutely awesome <laughs> you are so blooming creative yep <laughs> I am I am and if you guys watched my vlog you guys will know that I am happy life changing things and this is exactly precisely what I want to do and I am creative and I've been holding all this creativity in for 50 years so it's just you know boom is that an e4 no this is hatch cindy i use e4 on a daily basis for the my job which you know don and i run an embroidery business um but most of you have hatch so i'm really comfortable working in hatch so it's there oh vlog did you share the link of course i did of course i did don't be ridiculous as they used to say in the 80s yes i share every link on the oml embroidery page as well as the oml embroidery university group so every video will have uh, a link put in those two places so all right so the next thing i want to do uh, and there's a couple more things to this. So if you want to make any changes, here is where you can make the changes. So I'm going to go through and explain them. So pre-cut placement line only. So if you are pre-cutting it on your cutter, and I will show you guys how to do that in a minute, then you don't need as many lines. So trim in place, is placement and cutting lines and we're going to do that one for now so tack means the tack down stitches so it stitches the running stitch you put your fabric down or you put your fabric down and then it'll do the running stitch you trim it up and then you want it to zigzag down but you can change it to whatever you want i'm not sure what a box zigzag is but i bet you it's cool so either one is probably designed uh, for applique which is fine and cover you don't have to do cover satin you can do zigzag you can do blanket I love doing that with my Accu quilt it's awesome I mean does that setting offered in e4 probably I'll check for you though Cindy I don't do for business I don't do too much in the way of applique so I'm not sure but I will have a look for you and uh i'll let you know okay so offsets blah 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 frame out uh frame out means the and it's for multi-needle machines and it is an absolutely fantastic thing it means that your hoop on the machine will go out to its furthest extent towards you while you're while you're standing there makes it easier for applique so you don't have to you know take your hoop out trim it put it back it just goes Whoop. i have a couple of videos on my pr 1000 e named ragnar because he's awesome and i use the frame out option on it all the time and it's a big time saver 
So, okay, that's, uh, so you can change a lot of things around stitching. Um, now underlay, you know what? We don't need underlay. So I am going to take it off. So why don't we need underlay? Why? Because these satin stitches already have underlay. The underlay is the zigzag stitches underneath. So you don't need underlay. You can do it if you want, um, but it, save yourself the time. You don't need it. So take that off. You can leave the pull comp compensation where it is. That's fine. We don't want any effects on it because it's applique. So the next cool thing I want to do is add the fabric. There's one of my favorite things to do with applique because it really gives you an idea of what you're doing. It's fantastic. So you have a lot of choices here. You can pick factory. Now you can, I don't know. Oh, you guys can't see the pop-up. Ah, crap. I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, that sucks. Uh, this is one of the main things I wanted to show you guys. All right. Well, I'll describe it to you. Factory, you have some fabric and then you can put colors on it. So it'll be like a, a thin weave and you change the color. Custom is you can click on browse and it takes you to two folders. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware but you can take a picture of your fabric and put it in here and it's under hatch pictures and you can bring up your own fabric. So I'm just going to obviously skip over this. Now the one I did, um, it's under hatch pictures, fabrics, and it says Bentarex, which I guess is the name. And the one I picked is Backyard Butterflies. And there's a whole set, like a fat quarter set, it looks like, of fabric. So then you just click open and OK. And there it is. So sorry. <laughs> so sorry you guys missed all that. But isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that you can do that? I'm sorry you guys can't see the pop ups. Um, I could change it, but I don't. I don't want to mess up everything, so apologies for that. But yeah, so you can really get a feel of it. And in those folders, there is a, a ton of different ones. So to me, I think it's amazing. Now let's play around with it. I used orange for the outside. So at this point, we've got a groovy, a groovy one. I love the feature of, of adding your own fabric. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? You have to resize it a little bit, but uh, that sounds like another video to me. I think that would be awesome. Hello, this is my first time live viewing. Well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We have a lot of fun in here. So, okay, one thing that uh, it took me a minute to figure it out, but I figured it out. We want to, for example, we want to export an SVG. Now, the only, you know, restrictions or rules to this is that it still has to be an applique. What does that mean? That means go up here. Can you see where I am there? And it's going to say show more and it has to have this symbol. All right, it has to have this. This is an applique. If you do it, you know, separately, running stitch, zigzag stitch, satin stitch, it's not going to do it for you. So make sure you see that. And if you don't want to see all that, you just put it away. I happen to really enjoy the big pictures here. I think it's fun. But if you want to check, there we go. So we have the applique symbol and this means too if you have the symbol this is all one piece this is all one piece it's not coming apart it is not changing it's not anything so look for that symbol can you suggest a how-to video for scan and cut svg files uh for the scan and cut i'm pretty sure i've done a video on the scan and cut i have a scan and cut dx 225 and I think I did a funny fussy cutting 
fussy cutting video on it for Creative Kiwi for a mug rug. So you might want to look that up. It's there. Okay, so back to this. So we've got our symbol. Check. Let's go make an SVG. And where it is, and there's no pop-up. Blah. <laughs> Blah. All right, well, under File, under File, which is at the top right up here, right up here, File, you go down to, and it says, uh, export cutting and that's what you want to go to and you have some choices on this one again I'm sorry you can't see it but I'll read it to you guys export current design export selected objects only okay well that will you know that speaks for itself so the whole design or just a selected object now I have this selected right here so it's going to just do the selected um, objects so elements applique shapes and it's SVG and that's it and export to and tell it where and then you can export it and that is all there is to it now if you break this apart say you wanted to make some changes and you break this apart and the symbol is not there you cannot export it it won't be there it just simply won't be there so you have to have the symbol here and export it and save it in a convenient spot and then you can send it to your cutter machine now the SVG will work on any cutter machine so it's super easy to do the only thing that I remind people to do is remember the size up here because SVG for example when it comes into Cricut it comes in huge and you have to resize it and if you don't remember the size then you're going to get it wrong you do want to add a little bit here and there to it but generally you want to remember the size so let me catch up you can actually buy that fabric yeah that's cool actually I really need to upgrade I can only auto digitize and I find it very limited you are whiz with hatch thanks for sharing yes Lorraine upgrade if you want to do any digitizing you have to have the digitizer level and uh, you know you cut the hang of it pretty quickly I have a ton a ton of hatch videos I've got full classes I've got everything so you will be fine once you get it you'll be fine I'm always in the group to answer questions so I say go for it Brenda Miller yeah I made it yay Brenda welcome welcome all right so let's do another one and I'm gonna show you guys a little trick so let's go to lettering and we will do the uh, U and the E lowercase uh, in did I have that one as Harlow? No, that was the ugly one. What is this one called? No, no, no. Oh, because it's not a letter anymore. Oh, poo. Okay, I forgot. I forgot. Alpha slab one. That's what it was. I just clicked on the wrong one. So we've got the U and the E, and it doesn't have to be that big now f you could have done all of this in one but I'm kind of setting it up kind of as you know a little more stylish so a big s a smaller u and a smaller e let's make sure see that is a bit too small we want to make sure it is big enough so because we want our fabric to show so no skinny fonts right I've had so much fun making fun SVG files. Love this. Karina. Hello, Karina. Yes. SVG files and cutters are awesome. Um, when I do the cutter videos, some people get kind of miffed at me and they don't feel it's a part of embroidery, but it is a part of embroidery. You need to, if you have a cutter machine, um, it, it is going to save you a ton of time and you do have to learn how to do it properly, but I love it. I love it. I haven't gotten much into applique, but I have a cutter, so I should really try it one of these days. You should. You should, Jules. Um, you'll be surprised at how easy it is. And it's kind of fun. 
and it makes the applique, I, I'm not going to say easier because it depends on what you like. If you like trimming it out and getting precision that way, that's fine. If you want it all done, like for example, if you're doing a whole bunch of them, I would put them on my cutter and have them pre-cut. If I'm just doing a quick applique, then I'll just cut it in the hoop. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, make any difference, right? So... Should the letter be made a little bigger before sending to the cutter to make sure there's enough fabric or ta Yes, yes. Didn't I say that? I thought I said that. Maybe I thought I said it and didn't say it. You need to add, even though the SVG is going to come in huge and you need to reduce it, you can do that. It's not a problem. You're not going to, because it's a vector, you're not going to lose anything. But this is why I said pay attention to that. And you need to add just a little to it, two, three millimeters, four millimeters. Um, and you know, you'll, you'll figure out the number that you need for it. I usually add, so on my scanning cut, I do three up. So, so three bigger and I, it's probably three millimeters. So not a whole lot cause you really don't want to end up trimming it, but yes, you do need it bigger for sure. Still using 60, almost ready to downlight Hatch dis digitizer. Yeah, try it. Try it. I find Hatch logical and easy, and I really enjoy it. So, okay, with the U and the E, we have enough room for our fabric. And let's go here. What were we going to do? We are going to go to Create Layouts, which is a fun place to be create outlines and offsets and we don't want an offset this time we just want our single run outline and boom and it's done so let's get rid of these big huge letters that would look terrible stitching out because the satin stitches are too long now we have our u and our e i am not sure what happened there but we can fix it let's zoom in and Oh, this thing is so, my mouse is just huge. Okay, just fixed it. That's all I did is I just went into node mode and I just uh, fixed that node. I'm not sure what was going on there. You have a video for that. Uh, silhouette portrait. The cool thing is that you only need to make a satin stitch to make a cutting file if you want to cut out HTV. Yep, there's a lot of cool things about it. I, I haven't done enough of them because people sent me nasty emails saying it's not embroidery, but it is, it is embroidery. So I have a couple of cutter videos. They're under the playlist. OML crafty extras and I would love to do more because it's fun. It's fun. I've done a couple videos of how you can use your cutter machine to make matching cards by drawing out the embroidery and I'm telling you if you guys do that it's a huge hit people it's the wow factor and it's a whole lot of fun too. All right so let's get on our E. And there we go. So it's no longer a letter. I'd like you guys to see that. This is still applique, but these are not letters. They're open paths. So we want to select both of them, both parts, and we want to close that. And we want to go back to applique, which was right above. And the magic button that I think is awesome, convert to applique. Woohoo! Thank you. Let's change the color to orange. Let's change the color to orange. This one too. Change the color to orange. And let's pick our fabric to match. So applique fabric. Sorry about the pop-up. I'm just going to do the same thing. Custom and then click on browse. Go to the Benterac Backyard Butterflies. Pick the same thing. Open. And okay, sorry about that. Oh, it just did that one. Really? <laughs> really? Let's let's control Z or control Z that. Sue, you are so much fun. You should see me in real life. 
Yes, I laugh all day. I love to have fun. I'm rather silly. <laughs> but you know what? We're still learning. You can learn and have fun. When I started teaching classes, I I wanted to see what other people were doing. And what other people are doing is like a snore fest. And it was boring. Totally boring as heck. And I, I decided right then and there, I'm just going to be me and have some fun and make mistakes and do silly things. Just, you know, it's just me. That's who I am. So let's do this again. Ooh, it's not liking it. It's not liking it. It's going to do the U. The U is fine and we have our symbols. And this guy has the symbols. All right, we're going to check. Oh, I know why, because they're together. Yeah, there you go. All right, so let's put our fabric in then. So sorry about the pop-ups. Let's do it. Custom. Let's go to Browse, Benterax, Backyard Butterflies. Pick the cool stripey one. Open and OK. So that U looks awesome. I am happy with that. Let's go back to our E. E, 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 E. And the E is not happy for whatever reason. It is not happy. The one I did before actually was kind of happy. But let's go to here, digitize applique with holes. This is going to be the problem and fix it. So the problem is, this is applique, the middle of the E, and this is applique. So it's getting confused. Like I said, the other one over here worked perfectly, but it's probably because there was a bigger space. And what I had to do, I kept everything applique, selected it, because what it did was put the fabric all the way. It didn't do anything. So I selected both parts. And then I went to digitize applique with holes. And then I just digitized the hole and it worked out perfectly. So it could be the font. It could be anything. But let's see what happens. Applique fabric. So, OK, I'm select. I'm going to select the E. Let me get caught up on everything. When you convert to applique, does it automatically add the extra tack down stitches or is that something you do yourself by duplicating? No, it does everything. You can see over here, see over here, Jules, and you can select everything that you want. So it it is, you pick the style and that will decide what you, you know, what you're selecting tack down and cover stitches. So everything's there. So let's go to digitize applique with holes and you can see a nice dark bounding box and we're just going to digitize this part. You know what? I see what the problem is. Sometimes it just takes a minute. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. Enter, enter, go back to your select key and one will move and one will stay. The one that we're moving, if you look, it's a separate applique. It's a separate applique. So we don't need you, little e-hole. <laughs> e-hole, do you like that? <laughs> e-hole. All right, I need food. <laughs> and we have everything. Are the two parts of the e grouped? No. No, they weren't. They were separate, and that was the problem. Now, because I digitized a hole in it, it is one piece. Look, it's one piece. So do you, want, do you guys want me to show you that again? I can show you that again. Let's do it. Control. Oh, but I moved everything around. Boop, boop. Okay, so here is our E, and we all what we did is that we converted it, right? So we clicked on the E and we converted the whole thing to applique. And it is applique because you can see it. The problem is the applique, there's two pieces and that is not what we want. So if I was to put the fabric in, let's, uh, let's do this. So custom, browse, Benterax, Backyard Butterfly, pick the pretty striped one, and okay, that's the problem. That is the problem right there. 
So that is not what we want. Uh, it's just that's one piece of fabric and then it'll tell you to put another one. So you are so crazy. Not yet, but I'm working on it, Suzanne. <laughs> so what we want to do is select the outside of the E because this is the part that's causing us issues. And we want to go over here to digitize applique with holes and click on that. And I just, uh, I don't like the way that came out. So, ugh. so I am just digitizing the hole. That's what it means. Digitizing the hole. You can make it bigger, smaller. You can do anything you want. So you go enter, enter and look, ta-da. Now the thing is the, the, this one, we don't need it anymore because we have a proper one here. So we can just delete this guy. Now our E is one piece and it is perfect. It is perfect. I'm going to make the outside of that orange so we look good. So what do you guys think? Is it better to use Hatch on a desktop or laptop? Doesn't matter. I have trouble because I don't have a mouse. Well, get a mouse and put it on your laptop. Whatever you're comfy with. I... I do both. I use my Cintiq with a pen, whatever you're comfy as, uh, whatever you're comfortable with is what you want to do. So Leah, how boring life would be if you couldn't have fun doing things. I also don't mind laughing at myself because I really do some dumb things at times. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> my problem is I record it. <laughs> So I could do some really dumb things and I'll have to make a, an outtake roll of it because I do something and I go, really? I can't believe I just did that because I'm trying to talk and digitize and remember what I'm supposed to be doing all at the same time. And with the, the face cam on, I can't move all over the place. Oh, it's just annoying. So yeah. So the mouse is key. If you like a mouse... Uh, than it is. For me, I do, I have a MacBook Pro and it has a really cool pad that you, and I can't stand it. My kids love it, but I can't stand it. So I just plug in a mouse to it. Blooper would be fun. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. So then let's look, draw a bounding box around the whole the whole thing and it is 11 by 6. Now because we've kept everything with the symbol of applique we could make that a little smaller. I wanted to point out too when you click on something and you have can you see the hollow boxes right here can you see that well enough? The hollow boxes are going to change the angle. So it switches and then you change the angle. If you want to change the size, click on it again and see they turn dark. The boxes turn dark and the arrow turns the other way. So we can bring the whole thing down a little bit. And that might be, I didn't mean to click off there, uh, eight by five. Now that's okay. Now we can also do, you know, bring it down a little bit more, but do make sure that enough of your fabric is showing. I see a lot of people do this and they pick a font that is too small and not enough fabric shows through and it doesn't look the greatest. All right, let me catch up. I can see the possibilities for gifts. Now I got to try it. We'll have to come back from reminding how you did it. That is the coolest part about me doing everything on YouTube is within a half an hour when I'm done this live, you'll be able to go and watch and pause and do everything just like a normal video. So it's always there for you. If you get stuck or into trouble, post in the group. Um, it, a lot of people are sending me PMs and I really, I, I try to get back to everyone, but I can't always. So the best way of doing it is to um, uh, post it in the group and then other people can help too. 
All right, Brenda Miller. When doing embroidery, do you have to know how, you have to know how to laugh at yourself because it's going to happen. Yeah, well, I show you guys what I did. What did I do? A little while ago, I I stitched something on McDreamy, my brother Dream Machine. I was like, "Oh, bummer." Eh, if I'm going to do it, you guys are going to do it. So I just leave it in and show you guys how to fix it no matter what the the you know, the fixing part is you can fix it. Some things are, you have to start again. A lot of times I can figure out how to fix it. How do I get a shortcut sheet for hatch software? It is in the, um, manual and it's an online manual and you go right up here to help and you can see it and you can print out it's a PDF and you can print it out. So the last thing that I want to do here is I'm going to select the whole thing with a bounding box and I want to go to, I think it's edit objects. Yeah. Apply closest join just to tidy everything up a little bit. And you'll be doing the S, you'll be doing the U, and you'll be doing the E. Now, if you wanted to be a little more efficient, um, it, <laughs> Because you don't have to do it that way. Some people prefer it, and I'm not sure if there's a right way or a wrong way of doing it. But for me, I like to get the applique cutting and trimming and stuff out of the way first. So I would like to do the S, to, to outline the S, outline the U, outline the E. Put one piece of fabric down, because I think that would be easier. But not necessarily. If you're going to do scraps, then you want it. And have it tacked down and then uh, trim all of them at the same time. And uh, don't make this too small because this would be hard to trim out, but you know. Um, so it's kind of up to you. Now the way to do this is you have to break it apart. So I'm just going to do that just to show you guys. So let's do the S. So break apart will literally break it apart into into its pieces. So this is a single run. This is a single run. This is our zigzag. Whoops. Click zero to bring that back in. This is our zigzag and this is our satin stitches. So if you want to change stuff around after you save your SVG, because it won't do it now, it won't be available that's how you do it now these zeros i uh, get rid of them i don't know what they're for um it's just annoying e4 does it too so easy easy peasy lemon squeezy that's what you do here that's what you do i like actually i just noticed see this um symbol here the star open path uh it is darker because that's a satin stitch I didn't realize that. That's cool. So yeah, if you wanted to organize everything by color, um, just break it apart and then reorganize it. Make sure your steps are the same, but that's how you do it. Now, another cool thing is if you want to print this out, you can print it out with the pretty fabric. So you really get an idea of what your applique is gonna look like. Personally, I think having the fabric is awesome. I really, really enjoy it, so. Should you always select the closest join before finishing something? Um, you, you don't have to. You can make your template with closest join. That's a really cool thing about Hatch, is that it's always gonna do it automatically. And that's awesome. I love it for that. So you can set it up that um, it'll always do closest join. I, I love that. Karina, what is this? That's kind of, you need the zero for multi-needle? What did you put up there, Karina? That's weird. It's cool, but it's weird. It says Karina P and then something else. I don't know. I'll look at that, whatever. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned a few things, a couple of tricks and a couple of things to do in Hatch. Um, you can do this in any software. So your homework is to create an applique 
letter. Now you don't have to stitch it out. And if you're not uh, digitizing, then just stitch one. You don't have to stitch it out, but have it with, you know, nice background fabric, a nice size, a nice font, the whole bit. So we're going to keep doing these lives. We had 43 people watching today. That is a world record. I'm happy with that. Let me finish with the questions. The things you deleted, do you think are the catch hatch code for the frame out? Yeah, probably. And I don't care. <laughs> I don't want them. They messed up my line here. So you should probably leave them. I'm just picky, I guess. And uh, McDreamy doesn't have a frame out option. So um, there we go. I have palette 11, so we'll need to, yes. Well, it's, there's a couple ways of doing it, so you'll be able to figure it out. Cindy King, thank you for always giving us great videos and ideas. All they need, thumbs up, yeah, participation, comment, share, boot it around. I want to reach my goal, and I'm excited about that. So, Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you for joining me live. This was awesome. So interactive. I just love talking to you guys while I'm digitizing and explaining things as I go along. That way when the video is done, you guys feel confident and happy to go and do it yourself. Even though, you know, you might have to review the video. That is absolutely fine. It's 3.2 Canadian for coffee. <laughs> did you send, did you guys send Don coffee money? That is awesome. There's a dollar sign in the chat and you can support the channel with sending money. Oh my goodness. I don't think anyone has ever noticed that. I'm going to tell Don he's going to be so happy and run out and get coffee after he makes my dinner. Thank you so much, Karina and the Norseman, a.k.a. Tom. I appreciate it. So thanks, everyone. This was awesome. Jules, you have a great night, too. I'll wave to you across the... Um, Don, stop talking, Don. <laughs> Okay, so until next time, maybe Thursday, I'll come up with something interesting and I will uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye.